have our next storyteller coming up with us now, and he's been here before. We're so grateful to have him back. He continues to sort of grow and unfurl, and I just you get it's just, he's like good soup. Like the more you kind of stir it and kind of put it on the back burner, it gets richer and richer. And I feel that way about this storyteller. So I'm so grateful that we get to see him uh, progress in his storytelling because he's awesome. So please give it up for Raymond Wolkowski. <laughs> It's great to be back. Thank you. Uh, this is a story about a friend of mine by the name of Bob. And Bob was the most devilish friend I've ever had. Bob would get me to do things that I myself couldn't imagine. And I'd end up in a situation very scared and very guilty, and I didn't even know how I got there. And, and the thing about Bob is that he thought big. He didn't think, oh, let's take this, or let's go and look at that. He thought things like the story I'm about to tell you. And I thought, this guy's a devil, probably when I was 13 years old. And we were standing on a corner in Detroit, Seven Mile Road and Mon Elliott, and we were safety boys, and we were in the middle of a snowstorm. And Bob looks at me and he says, let's call a snow day, which means no one would have to come to school. And I look at him and I said, well, you know, the principal calls snow days, not the safety boys. <laughs> And, and, and Bob says, no, 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 we'll just tell her that somebody said it and because it was a snowstorm, we thought it was her. And I said, no, 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 no. And, and we, we look across the street and there's a fellow by the name of Clarence Smelko and another fellow by the name of Tom Novak and he can see that I'm starting to doubt things, so he calls them over. And he starts to tell him what we should do. And then Clarence Samelko asks the question that's the tipping point. And that is, if we take a snow day, what are we going to do? And Bob says, play hockey. And that was it, because this is 1957. This is the Detroit Red Wings. This is Scordy Howe, Ted Lindsay, three Stanley Cups, and we were hockey crazy. So that said, okay, let's do it. So he ran down to Seven Mile Mound to send the kids back in that direction, and I ran down <laughs> Mount Elliott to send the kids back from that direction. And from a distance, I just started to go, hey, go back, go back, snow day, snow day, no school. And, and it was like a herd of cattle. It was like, yeah, everybody started turning around. And then, and then I, I felt this kind of power. And, and I smiled, and I was so happy. And, and no one, not a single person said, who gave you that authority? <laughs> so, so, so now, I've got, I've got the rest of the day ahead of me. I'm with 15 guys. we got hockey sticks. And we've got our, well, what I would call guards, guards on our knees, so we don't get too rough. And, and as we're going, a cop car pulls up. And I see this hand come out, and it goes like that. And I think to myself, is it a crime to lie to a cop? <laughs> and I start to slowly approach the car, and I hear the cop ask me, aren't you guys supposed to be in school? And before I can answer, my friends are with their hockey sticks, and they're going, snow day, snow day, snow day. <laughs> and the cop looks at us and smiles and says, hey, Fun, fine, have yeah, some fun, enjoy yourself. So we go to the park, we got our hockey sticks and skates, and 
We forgot to bring a puck. <laughs> but we found an old tennis ball. We threw that out, we played with that, we had a good time. And then we're walking back. And I walk with my friend Tom and go up to Tom's house and his mother's standing in the doorway. And Tom says, guess what? Snow day. And his mother says, guess what? The principal calls. <laughs> you have to be in the office tomorrow morning, first thing. And I had the same message waiting for me back home. So now I have a sleepless night. I get up. I go to school. Bob, Clarence, Tom's already there outside of her office. And I join them. She opens the door. She calls us in. She looks at us. And she says, you lied? You dishonored the safety boys? <laughs> took a day of school away from every student in this building and every teacher in this building. And you are suspended. Put your safety belts on my desk. So we start walking toward the door and then she says, stop. Never, never again do that. Never. Sheepish, and we go out the door, and I look at my friend Bob, and he looks at me, and he says, maybe. <laughs> I said, you are dangerous, man. You are dangerous. Wow. 25 years go by. And we lost touch with each other. He rambled on. And he was, at the end of high school, he went to do what's called mechanical drawing for Ford Motor. And I got a part-time job, and I started going to college. And then these 25 years go by. I'm living in Seattle. I'm in the living room, and we're reading the Sunday papers. And my wife says to me, didn't you used to know a guy named Bob Bujak? And I said, yeah, you're crazy, man, crazy. And she says, well, he's being quoted on the front page of the New York Times. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 no. And she said, no, Robert Bujak, president of RCA Records, <laughs> says that compact discs are going to change the music industry. I said, can I see that? And I look at that, and it's Robert Bujak. Now, Bushak is not a common name. And so Monday morning, I call RCA Records, and I ask for the president's office. And they put me through. And the assistant answers the phone, and I tell her, I said, my name is Raymond Lukowski, and I'm a friend of Mr. Bushak's. May I talk with him, please? And she says, well, what kind of friend? And I said, a high school friend, uh, went to school together. And she said, just hold on. And I hear her walk away, and she comes back. And she says, I'm sorry, you can't take the call. He's in a meeting. And I figured, oh, 25 years, that's it. So three hours pass by, and the phone rings. And I pick it up, and it's his voice. Now, here's the thing. This is a quote. He hasn't talked to me in 25 years. And the first thing he says is, how did you find me? <laughs> hey, Bob, it was easy. You're in the papers. I mean, come on. And, and, and we had about a 10-minute conversation. It was really enjoyable. Two weeks later, I'm in New York City. I'm on the 52nd floor of the RCA building. I'm sitting in the presidential suite. I'm sitting in the boardroom watching a chef make us brunch for Mr. Bouchak and myself. <laughs> and we just had a, a nice time, like friends do. And, and the thing I like the most about it 
was we didn't talk about snow days. We didn't talk about the old days. We talked about our jobs, our families, our lives, what it was like to live in Seattle, what it was like to live in New York City, how we got in the music business, which was managing bands. And time went like that. So I go back to my hotel room, and waiting for me in my room is a box of 40 CDs and a fifth of scotch. <laughs> and a note saying, great to see you, Ray. Let's stay in touch. And I sit on the edge of the bed, and I got all these emotions running through me. I got like, friendship and satisfaction and gratitude. And I also got some other emotions. Uh, relief and trepidation. Because when devils ramble on, Sometimes they ramble back. Thank you.